Um, I'm very pleased to introduce Christy Porter. Um, Christy is a director of PwC. Okay. Welcome, everyone. I know I'm one of the first speakers before we kick off for drinks, so I'll bear that in mind as we start and keep the countdown clock on. So today I'm here to talk to you about the ESG revolution. As the chair and CEO of BlackRock, Larry Fink says, mm -hmm. the more your company can show its purpose in delivering value to its customers, its employees and its communities, the better able you will be to complete and deliver your long-term durable profits to your shareholders. We believe ESG presents a revolutionary opportunity to the Australian mining industry working in Africa to tackle the tomorrow and change the hearts and minds of the people on the planet about mining, to create a new narrative and shift the dialogue from dirty to clean to green, to embed that resilience and that sustainable practices for the decades ahead. Globally, ESG has been a growing discussion point for the last few years, but since the pandemic began, the impetus to set the world on a more sustainable footing has taken on a new urgency. Many indicators signal an inflection point. One of the most compelling, nine, out of the world's, nine of the world's 10 biggest economies have committed to achieving net zero emissions by the mid-century. Customers, employees, communities, governments and suppliers now expect companies to create value that is now sustainable. And ESG means much more than just a social licence to operate for the Australian mining industry in Africa. And more than just the right thing to do, this set of considerations presents the opportunity to play a leading role in the transition to a low carbon global economy and in doing so, carve out that path for long term value creation but making sure it's inextricably linked to the investor desires and returns. What we often hear in today's boardrooms and the C-suites and their virtual equivalents is a mixture of anxiety and enthusiasm about the ESG issues. Leaders and investors are asking, what risks are we sitting on as pressure for ESG disclosures mount? How do we measure and manage them when there are no common standards? Where should we focus when the list of potential issues is a mile long? And critically, which is where the enthusiasm does come in. As we take a hard look at our business, what opportunities can we identify to solve those big problems and create value in new ways? The answers to these questions are all interrelated. And as are the initiatives, those answers will motivate. That's reimagined reporting, strategic reinvention, and ultimately wholesale business transformation. Not only are those dimensions interdependent, but each of them can create momentum that helps fuel the others tackling these three imperatives. So reimagine reporting. The most immediate call for action is some combination of heightened regulatory requirements, risk awareness, and demand for data and transparency. Strategic reinvention. In some cases, reimagine reporting will convince companies that to make progress against new metrics, they must rethink basic strategic questions about where and how to compete. In other cases, companies are moving aggressively to redefine their strategy with ESG at its core before grappling with the changes in reporting. And as for business transformation, as a business that begins to report against broader non-financial metrics will quickly find it needs to define objectives to manage those metrics and therefore drive that transformational change needed to achieve them. Every company, however, is unique and so is the scope of change it needs. It all adds up to a new equation for business, behaviours based on purpose and trust that create value by finding solutions to the challenges society is facing today. On the table are increased shareholder value, product and operations differentiation and improved access to capital. If you can take the same must-do approach to the totality of ESG, as the Australian mining industry working in Africa has already done so, to social and community investment, to employing local labour, to health and safety, then the benefits are well within the grasp, to turn that tide from value consumption to value creation. We believe ESG presents that revolutionary opportunity to the Australian mining industry working in Africa to tackle the tomorrow and change the hearts and minds of the people on the planet about mining, to create a new narrative and shift that dialogue from dirty to clean to green. So how do we demystify the E, the S and the G? It covers such a broad range of topics designed to measure a company's resilience to the long-term industry materiality 
And here on the slide, we show you just an indicative list from the SASB and MSCI frameworks. It's not intended to be exhaustive, but it gives you a view with an investor lens as a key stakeholder. And I've highlighted two key areas you can see under the social banner, human capital and social opportunities. Some aspects of which we know the Australian mining industry in Africa has already been delivering on and making strong progress. But what do those outside the industry know? And are you being transparent enough about your progress towards these outcomes? How are you telling your story? And are you getting the credit for it and playing your part in creating the new narrative for the industry? What more can you be doing in the E or the G space? And where are your gaps? We understand it can be complicated and there is a lot to do, but investors are telling us to just get on with it and accelerate our pace. Otherwise, we'll be laggards and left behind on the global stage. Investors are making capital and debt allocation decisions based on ESG-related data. The cost of debt is also changing. Financiers are offering green or sustainability-linked loans with interest costs linked to, those ES linked to your ESG performance, such as targets on green investments or progress that you're making on sustainability initiatives. The implications of this is that there will be an increasing gap in the growth of those that can access lower cost of capital versus those that can't, as the delta is invested back into the businesses for innovation and new technologies. Other stakeholders include our customers, suppliers, employees, communities and governments, and they're all looking to management to drive this value creation. They also expect the company to balance those broader organisational obligations it has in society. There is increased pressure from investors for mines to contribute to climate change, for example, powering their operations, hybrid energy by supplementing energy demand with renewable sources to reduce their carbon footprint, some great examples of which we are already hearing about at today's conference. Nearly 3,000 investors, asset managers and pension funds have signed up to the UN principles of responsible investment, six principles of which encourage investors to enhance returns and better manage risks by incorporating ESG factors into investment and ownership decisions. Climate Action 100 Plus, for example, is now backed by more than 360 investors, including pension funds, with more than 34 trillion in assets under management, including 87 North American investors. Using the shareholder levers, this group has called on companies to set science-based targets, improve climate-related financial disclosures, and align executive remuneration with climate performance. More widely, asset owners are increasingly committing to decarbonising their portfolios. From the 2.5 trillion assets under management, the Asset Owners Alliance, of insurers and pension funds to investor pledges to exit coal, oil and tar sands, or over time, diesel car investments. Many in the Australian mining industry working in Africa are doing things in this area, but are not transparent about it and therefore not getting the credit. So question, how do you assess your performance against ESG global best practice? The answer, there is no global standard yet. So the push towards ESG reporting, particularly in Australia, is strongly driven by large investors, including the activist shareholders advocating for those net zero policies and greater quality and comparability of disclosures to aid their decision making around their capital allocations. C but companies are responding. We're seeing around 80% of the ASX 100 have some form of ESG metric in their executive bonus calculations, with eight companies including climate measures in their short term bonuses in 2020. This number is expected to double within the next year with the largest focus on the environmental metrics. But if you're looking for something harmonised today, it doesn't exist. This is a landscape you're dealing with. Which one do you pick? Where are the trends? We certainly look to Europe who's driving this. We recommend to get ahead, be a leader in this space before it is legislated on you. There are some global standards coming down the pipe and it will become legislated, but importantly, this isn't something you can delegate to the sustainability or compliance person in your business. It must sit in the C-suite and be leader-led. So what are some of the latest developments in voluntary standards? There are four which we recommend to watch. GRI, they're currently undertaking a review of the universal standards, including its guidance on the selection of material topics for reporting. The Value Reporting Foundation, the recent merger of 
RC and SASB is designed to assist in the process of simplifying the corporate reporting landscape. The new body offers principles, a framework and standards. And the World Economic Forum issued a white paper about this time last year outlining the common stakeholder capitalism metrics for sustainable value creation based on existing standards with a near-term objective of accelerating convergence. For those in gold plays, the World Gold Council also has its framework. Although many of the Australian mining industries working in Africa understand the importance of ESG, some still see it as just another box to tick. But ESG represents one of the most significant opportunities for long-term value creation and to build trust and sustainable growth. ESG is not something that we do once and set and forget. There is now an expectation to engage with stakeholders with genuine purpose and desire to make a meaningful impact and start to bake ESG into the core of your organisational strategy and purpose. Demonstrate that you not only understand the risks and opportunities of ESG, but are committed to addressing them in everything you do. Change has become part of our everyday. The way in which organisations communicate to stakeholders is not immune to this. And what companies report on and measure themselves against has also undergone significant change and becoming increasingly complex. With ESG reporting no longer being optional, we recently analysed the ASX 200 to understand where the maturity of the market sits. And we found a broad range in both quality and consistency. The four key findings from that research were, one, ESG reporting fell short of the standard for financial reporting and therefore below stakeholder expectations. Two, companies need to reshape how they think about and report on their corporate strategy. Three, a lack of clear targets and accountability limits trust. And four, the integrity of ESG reporting needs to be upheld. Our research also showed that ESG KPI identification was not widespread and with targets associated with these KPIs even more limited. The most prevalent areas where targets were set was around climate change and greenhouse gas emissions. But in contrast, setting targets across other ESG KPIs was inconsistent and should be an area of focus for the future, specifically in relation to social and governance aspects. Investors are increasingly vocal in their support for ESG to be linked to remuneration, suggesting this low rate of adoption may need to change. Tax transparency is another clear way in which companies can demonstrate their commitment to ESG. It allows companies to demonstrate their significant financial contribution to the communities in which they operate. And whilst generally voluntary, we are seeing stakeholders have an expectation that companies do embrace tax transparency. The far-reaching effects of ESG transformations mean their success is heavily dependent on the focus and drive of senior leadership. In many companies, the needed leadership is still emerging. Lack of attention or support from leadership ranked high on the list of barriers to ESG effectiveness in PwC's recent executive survey. In our experience, committed leaders can make an enormous difference by focusing on two priorities. First, leaders need to be able to connect ESG initiative with the company's overall direction. And secondly, a critical priority is to back up their ESG initiatives and aspirations with real resources. That is easier said than done because budgets are sticky and there's considerable competition for capital and the best people. And it's certainly easy for the here and now priorities to trump ESG investments. Executive survey called out balancing ESG with growth targets as a top barrier to effectiveness and difficulty quantifying potential ROI was, wasn't too far behind but strong leaders can help change the conversation. But without a passionate, bold and consistent effort from this cohort, the Australian mining industry working in Africa, they won't be able to tackle the tomorrow in time and change the hearts and minds of the people on the planet about mining. That's why it's critical we come together to create a new narrative and shift the dialogue from dirty to clean to green. In closing, if there are only three things you remember from today, it is these. One, the ESG revolution is here already and you must tackle the tomorrow. Craft and define the new narrative because if you don't, someone else will do it for you. Two, it's not just about the environment or social or governance, but the intersection of all three. Leverage ESG reporting to tell your story and data is key. And thirdly, complexity is okay, but it doesn't need to be complicated. Prioritise the right ESG activities and quantify the impact aligned to your purpose. 
These three must be underpinned and enabled by strong leadership in the C-suite. And it must be important to you as equally as the number of tonnes you mine each day. So when is something so big is so multifaceted, how do you solve for it? The same way you eat an elephant, one bite at a time. The first bite is figuring out where you are on the ESG maturity curve. Are you defensive or are you offensive? Start with what you have, and that will be different for all organisations, but responding now is key. We will never be done getting our companies ready for the ESG revolution. As we lean into tackling the tomorrow, the goalposts will continue to change. The rules won't be the same, and the players will want and need different things. But what does not change is that there are players and there is winning and losing the game. And the question we need to ask ourselves is, are our players and coaches able to play the game and win as the goalposts move and the rules change? Thank you.